the journey to network automation. We have decades of advancements in research and technology, but what has gone largely ignored and underserved? You, the network operator, architect, and engineer. That changes now. The measure of network automation success may start with Juniper, but it ends with you operating network services. Ultimately, it comes down to not how automatable Juniper is, but how automated your net ops are. And the hero of that journey is you, our customers, and specifically you rising network reliability engineers, NREs, that hold reliability prerequisite to other economies and follow proven engineering skill sets and workflows to approach automating operations. But how do you get to a place of engineering outcomes, like putting your toil and errors on a budget and automating your way to seeing and knowing that your service level indicators are green and your objectives and agreements are met? Enter our five-step framework to automated net ops. This is not some rebirth as a developer. Rather, it's a journey that you or any network engineer can take to NRE-like outcomes. Now, I can promise you that progress is seldom a straight line and you'll need to calibrate and orient yourself along these steps in various NetOps domains. But we're really excited about this five step because it's industry leading thinking and lessons put together with some of the brightest NREs from hyperscalers, enterprises, and service providers. Let's start at the beginning. Step one, it's manual ops. Today, this is the most common starting point, so little explanation is required. But interestingly, we're not prescribing that you automate everything because some manual ops are actually very useful to teach people how things work together and fit together. But for tasks that are arduous, lengthy, and repetitive, and especially critical, network engineers need to begin to document their tribal knowledge and workflows and assess the return on investment of automating them. In step two, you take documented workflows or their pseudocode and start automating those workflows as small wins. This will help you cut your teeth learning some new tools, markups, and some programming. Now the biggest payoff is in repetitive troubleshooting workflows, which are in fact an early form of testing and verification that will be useful in later steps. Read-only workflows like troubleshooting are safer than reconfiguration and redeployment read-write workflows. At this step, when you're changing things, maintenance windows mitigate risk, but they're increasingly an IT anti-pattern to avoid. So we'll see how changes are best handled with the reliability of a pipeline introduced in later steps. Building on top of ad hoc automation skills and workflows at step three, you're learning to manage things with GitOps, version control, and code reviewing. In other words, you're embracing infrastructure as code and thinking about automating your troubleshooting as testing and proactive verification. Beyond proactive tests, you can begin proactive thinking about triggering some of those automated actions with event-driven frameworks. And that proactive triggering requires building or using sensors. Think of them like the if this that will fire the then that actions that you might have built earlier in step two. Of course, sensors are sometimes based on SDN, telemetry, and analytic systems that are useful for providing meta-level APIs that help NREs build higher order service level indicators. In step four, the technology takes on a different axis of formalizing the pre-production instead of only in production. And we do that with a CI-CD pipeline for running automated testing. There's plenty to learn about continuous integration, CI, and the two CDs, continuous delivery and deployment. Some people specialize in the area of testing, building, and usually more testing, and then staging before automating deployments. Now beyond CI-CD, continuous response, CR, formalizes the event-driven if this, then that from step three. CR is usually baked into intent-driven SDN products and helps to automate regulation of network systems to achieve optimization and efficiency far closer to the edge of the envelope than what any human would manage. 
But beyond if this, then that, you can up-level your visibility and reaction too by applying continuous response, combining event-driven tools with frameworks for big data analytics, machine learning, deep learning, or even just some simpler statistical calculations. While step five is the last step, it's one of continual learning and growth. Here you're able to quickly and safely iterate on the network and fine tune your processes to focus on higher order reliability metrics and other goals. Don't stop at network service availability alone. Continuously improve abilities to respond to issues, changes, requests, and new projects. The network ceases to be the center of the universe in this step and the NRE, specialized in networking, though they may be, will manage reliability with error budgets, toil budgets, and service level indicators like any other SRE. They do this for themselves with service level objectives and for their dependents with service level agreements. An NRE has a worldview with separation of concerns and understands their place and their layer in the stack. They consider their lower level dependencies too. For example, they may have reliability dependencies on the software running inside of infrastructure outside of their control. With agreements, automation, and trade-offs, reliability is a goal to be managed, not necessarily maximized. Speed, agility, and efficiency, and other gains are incidental for the NRE, who holds reliability and availability prerequisite as the most important metric. That wraps up our five step to automated NetOps. You can learn more about the steps and transitions in the description below with the links to our five-step blog, our labs, and other products and services.